You're going neat, huh? Just straight up? Straight up. Cheers, Patrick. Wow, look at that. To the good old days. To the good old days. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ritz Camera Chronicles, where we tell stories of the greatest photography company ever in existence. Yeah, we worked there as the company was going bankrupt, and we have we were like two of a, you know a couple thousand people. Yeah, so a drop in the bucket. But, but we got to see everything. A drop. We we knew what was going on behind the scenes. I think in the last video we were talking about just the incompetence, total incompetence of the management locally and higher up luckily that's not going to change in the rest of these episodes no that's the running it only gets worse the running theme it only gets worse but um we were talking about inventory and how the district manager was telling us to cook the books to make it seem like we were selling certain things that we were having competitions for and so it, it caused us to have a surplus in some inventory and then absolutely no inventory and other daily things that we needed, like paper and chemicals. Yep. Remember when we'd run out of chemicals? That was as bad as running out of paper. Yeah, it's like, exactly. Because with the paper, you at least could be like, we light leaked it, and it's been wasted. But with chemicals, it's like, how do you explain that? Like, where did your chemicals go? And you're like, Yeah, we were just straight up, everything was a lie. One way I think our store in particular floated this whole thing and like allowed us to kind of pull off this scheme that other stores couldn't do is we had this one guy who he took pictures around town of architecture that looked like letters. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the first guys that I could remember. Now, now it's like, it's, you know, there's thousands of businesses that do this, but you know, he would make like your name and it would be different letters and it would be cast iron and all this stuff. But he would come in like every three days and he would print it was like 2,000 prints yeah. every couple days. Yeah. And so we would always – I mean, he was part of the scam too because our managers would be like, sell him three memberships. But you could only sell so many memberships before you had to start selling prints. So I believe because we could sell 1,000, you know, 700 prints from him alone, it kind of allowed us to look like we were legit because when he came in, it was like, boom – we would be able to get the new paper inventory because we would record that one legit. Maybe so. Maybe so. He helped us with the scam. Well, and also I remember everybody wanted to check him out because you knew you got to get three new memberships <laughs> plus the prints. So if, if it was like the end of your shift, but like, I don't know, let's just call him Paul. If Paul was wrapping up his prints and they were coming out of the machine and, you know, it's like boxes. It's like you have this thing you have to take to the register you might hang around a little longer because you knew, hey, I'll make 15 bucks if I check him out. 15 bucks was a lot of money during our Ritz camera days. So speaking of inventory and gaming the system, we had lots of free time. And uh, I was always scheming and just trying to figure out ways to, you know, make a buck or whatever. And I signed up for this thing with Bank of America called Keep the Change. <laughs> and it was this... Such a good story. It was this system that when you would buy something for like a dollar and five cents it would round it up to two dollars and then it would move the 95 cents to your savings account it was supposed to be like it helped tr trick people into saving it money. helped people who are irresponsible <laughs> right. build a savings account by charging you more in the store but then giving you the money it's kind of like social security or something it's like taking right. money from you now right so that you'll have something in the future now normally i wouldn't be interested in this in this at all but they had a deal that said they would match the amount of money that that got transferred to your savings account for the first month or something up to it, it was wasn't like even a, that much money. It like might have been up to one. Or, no, it was like a hundred or two hundred dollars. Okay. It was. It was. It wasn't that much money, but that was a lot of money to me back then. And I remember you telling me about this scheme. I'm reading about it on the internet, and people are like, "You got to go to the pump, the gas pump, and like just pump a, a penny." It's all about getting hang just over the dollar. The closer you can get to, yeah. A if you penny. buy something for five ninety nine, then you only get the penny. And then the bank matches a penny. Yeah, that, but if you get a dollar oh one, you yeah. get the ninety nine cents. Yeah. So, and this is going to take, I mean, a lot of transactions. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, if you got a perfect 99 cent transaction and it was a $200 thing, you'd have to do it over 200 times in a month. Yeah. And imagine how many, how like long pumping it gas, would take you're gonna, you're to gonna, pump gas. Yeah. I mean, it would take forever to pump gas and like, 
doing the lever and taking it on and off and hitting the zip code, it would be a nightmare. You're gonna have to go in there and talk to the, the attendant and explain. Yeah, they're what gonna, you're, gonna call gonna the be cops like, Are you on an you? idiot? And you're like, No, I'm just... right. So, I have some free time at Ritz. So I just think to myself, like, I'm just gonna find something in the store that rings up to exactly like something 01 or something, you know. So I'm. I'm just walking around the store scanning stuff. I'm going into the back room, like opening boxes that haven't been opened in 20 years and just like pulling things out and scanning them. I found an item that rang up for a penny. It literally scanned in our system as a penny. And I think it was a calculator or it was it like was, a- It was a free item that you were supposed to give your customers if they did like three things. If they bought the membership, bought prints and got an ESP in the same transaction. But but it was old. It might have been like from a year and a half before or something. Yeah, it was and something nobody would want. It was like a horrible calculator <laughs> that was gaudy and ugly and you would never want it. But we We're, had like six of them in the back somewhere. Right, or two in the back. And so it was a penny just because it was supposed to keep inventory. You were supposed to show that like, you know, the customer took it or whatever. It left, so we're going to replace it. But gonna, it was, it was supposed to be it. free. Yeah. So... I'm sitting there one night and I'm like, man, I'm about to do this 200 times. <laughs> I'm about to buy this 200 times because I, I have all the time in the world now and I'm good on the machine, even though our machines were like MS DOS and you had to you know have all the, these you command have the prompts. You have four button cl- like system down. You know, it's like shift five, enter, one, enter, return, enter, run the I credit card. I could do card. it with my eyes closed. Yeah. That's how good of an employee I was. So... I start going. Were you there that night? I think I was closing, and you had just wrapped up. So now you're like, oh, I'll stay with Patrick for the last hour and oh, run your little so, scheme. Oh, so I was like off the clock. I think you were off the clock. So that makes it even better. I wasn't even wasting the company's money. And I wasn't going to take the calculators. I was going to pay for the calculators, and I was going to leave them there. I didn't want them. Yeah, you were leaving their inventory. Yeah, so I'm going at it. I'm swiping the credit card. It's going for a penny. It's like printing out these ridiculous receipts, you know, with each one. It's like the one you have to sign because it's a credit card, and then it's the receipt that you get to keep. So each one is like two receipts. So I'm not pulling the receipts off. The receipts are just endlessly coming out and like spilling onto the floor. And it's like it's getting absurd how much paper there is. I don't think you guys realize how long it takes to do i mean 30 transactions where you don't cut the paper would be a lot you're going for all 200 in one night yeah i think i think i got to around 80 or 85 transactions and it took a long time to do that and i am i have these giant ritz camera bags that you'd put like tons of stuff like camera backpacks would go in these bags and i'm stuffing the receipts in the bag and it's still attached to the machine it's just spitting it out into this bag the credit card company shuts down my credit card all the time now when I'm trying to buy legitimate things. For some reason, that was fine. They were like, just one penny, keep, one keep penny, going. one penny. Just keep going. So I don't think I had a problem with that, but maybe I got a call from... Like HR or something? Yeah, HR. And, you know, it's like, now I'm scared. Because I'm trying to think, am I doing something illegal right now? Because... I remember you kept trying to say, like, I'm leaving the inventory, and if anything, I'm giving Ritz Camera a penny that I'm not asking for back. Yes, and worst case, maybe Ritz Camera's being charged three cents or something for a credit card transaction fee. And, worst case. So and, and maybe I would be responsible for that. Yeah. Like, maybe I'd have to pay $30 $3, or yeah. $3, like, whatever that math is. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, I, I'm not doing anything wrong. And I'm off the clock, like you just told me. I'm so, not like, wasting company time. Yeah. So I'm scared because I'm like, they can see what's happening behind the scenes. Because they do have cameras in the stores, right? Like surveillance cameras. Now, who's. If they, if they did, nobody was looking yeah, at that. Nobody no one at corporate was. Like maybe it's being saved in the yeah, store. Yeah. I just thought they were seeing some anomaly happening on their Ritz Central yeah. command center, and I was in trouble. But. They asked about other things like how many Ritz camera it's memberships like, have you sold hey, today? This is Katie. So I get through that call, my heart's pounding like whew, I dodged a bullet. I'm starting to think like, man, I don't know if I can do this. All of a sudden, the front door opens and it is the district manager. <laughs> and I 
am petrified. I because I'm thinking like I'm going to jail. Like you're getting, you're getting fired. I'm definitely getting fired, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to jail. I don't know if this is theft. I don't know what. I don't know if I'm in trouble with Bank of America. I don't know where the law is on this. He comes in. I have a shopping bag with receipts overflowing that's still attached to the printer. On any given day, this Ritz camera store might have, let's just make up, I mean, like 60 transactions. And you alone have added 80 transactions for a penny. It's just like the last log is just penny, 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 you know, and you've done more transactions than what we would normally do in a day. Yeah. And the district manager never comes into our Especially store. Especially at like 8.30 at night. It's never happened. So I'm thinking. He knows. He knows. Like he knows. HR called to make sure that I was still here. They see me on the surveillance. Like they called him and told him to get his ass down here. He walks right by. I swear he looked at the bag full of receipts overflowing. He said nothing. And then asked us some retarded question like, "How many, how many ESPs have you guys sold today?" Because all they care about is the numbers. That's all they cared about. I think he like left something from the visit earlier in the day or something. I think he was maybe just, that's what it was. He was about to go back to Columbia, and he was like, "Oh, I left my bag, or I I need to get a, a frame for a customer." Maybe that's what it was. And he Maybe came- it w- he came back for no business reason whatsoever. And I'm standing there like sweating w- with the proof right in front of me. And he's like, all right, guys, I'll see you, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> the printer is just – it's still feeding into the bag. It's so many receipts that surely as the manager of a district, you would say – why do you have all these receipts here that nobody signed? And like, what is what is going on? It looks so absurd. So I uh, I dodged that bullet. Now, did you get your your two hundred dollars? Um, I did. It wasn't two hundred. It was like eighty five bucks. And maybe I got a little bit more because of the other normal transactions I did. The additional thirty days. Yeah. But it's tough. I mean, even if you buy five things a day. There's a very good chance each transaction is going to end around 50 cents. So maybe you're making $2 a day, $2.50 a day, if you're doing five transactions a day. So Bank of America had definitely thought it out. They knew how difficult it would be to hit the max 200 or they whatever. They didn't think it out well enough. They didn't think about this brain. Yeah. Uh, but I, I got... The best part of the story, though... Maybe I've forgotten. Well, we were talking about inventory. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what brought this whole thing about. So too, there's these random items animals. that are a penny from like five years before, and we have like three of them in our store. Yep, yep. Not so, anymore. So fast forward two months, and, uh, you know. Well, it was like have, a couple weeks. Was it? Yeah. I'm opening up boxes, you know, we're getting out the, the new cameras and everything, and I open up a box, <laughs> a gigantic <laughs> box of free calculators. I forgot. I forgot. That was the whole reason I brought up this story. <laughs> and no, uh, it wasn't just a scam. And it, you're not really scam. I mean, you're working the system. I don't know that anything you're doing was like technically illegal, but like you found a way to like maximize the amount on the keep the change program. But <laughs> but, but in the meantime, this is how stupid Ritz camera is. So. The the system that they were they were giving away the free calculators was literally years expired. Yeah, it was literally years expired. But but everything was so automated and it was all run by computers and everything that they were just like, eighty five calculators were sold. Ship out eighty five more calculators, even though there was literally no way to get rid of the calculators. That there was there was no promotion going on. Yeah. Like, this store is just going to get 50 new calculators with no means to ever sell them. It's and just going to be more junk sitting in their store. Exactly. And I don't know if they just had extra inventory somewhere in a warehouse or if they, like— They paid? They went to China and got the calculators shipped to them. Who the hell knows? I remember when that box came in, and it was just like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, there's, there's like, 83— you know, I mean, it's like the size of this thing. I mean, it's like a box of yeah, stuff. It's, yeah, you have like eight, it's it like came a, in fancy packaging. It, it took up space. And I remember our manager was like, 
Why would they send us this? I don't know. That's really weird, huh? I wonder why we're a camera store and they're shipping us calculators and PlayStation 1 games, but that's Ritz Camera. Well, guys, we have so many more Ritz Camera stories like this one. Uh, I think we've decided we're going to split them up just because we could talk for hours. We're going to keep filming and we're going to keep drinking. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell because we're going to be randomly releasing these videos. And they've got to get better as we go on because, I mean, I'm, I'm already pretty buzzed. This is my second old fashioned. And well, the next story's on you, man. So uh, stay tuned for that one. I'm sure it's going to be good.